Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston, and I'm coming to you with this week's Sunday's lesson. Uh, sorry that it's so late coming out, uh, but our lesson for this uh, Sunday is Parables of God's Just Kingdom. Parables of jo God's Just Kingdom. And our lesson is coming from Matthew, the 13th chapter, the 24th verse through the 33rd. And now, uh, for those of, uh, of us that... Uh, study the word, we do know that we go back and read uh, possibly the full chapter and maybe the chapter before and the chapter after to bring more fuller meaning to what the Lord is is, is giving us at this time. Amen. Uh, we want to uh, first uh, thank you for uh, dropping in. We want to ask you if you uh, enjoy or have any questions or any thoughts of what uh, on what is being said if you would uh, jot a little small note uh, a little uh, line to to express your feelings and I uh, would ask you to subscribe to my channel <coughs> oh, excuse me and uh, Amen. Uh, as we get ready to get started, we're going to first, of course, have a prayer and ask, invite the Lord in with us. Uh, let, let us all uh, bow our heads and, and, and have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for watching over us and strengthening us. We thank you for guiding us. We thank you for being our almighty God. We thank you that you are Lord of our life and our being and our going forth and our coming in in our name Jesus. Lord, we ask you that you will at this time open our ears that we may hear, our eyes that we may see, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word that we may receive that that you have for us in this lesson today. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. We're going to get ready at, and begin our lesson uh, for the uh, Sunday School and Weekly Bible Study. And the scripture lesson is coming from Matthew 13, 24 through 33, as stated earlier. And the uh, text read, Another parable put, parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed, sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Amen. As we look at just these two verses, we uh, anyone that has heard these verses or read this chapter uh, realize that uh, the sower is Jesus Christ himself or the ministers of the gospel. Uh, those that are, are seeking to do the will of the Lord and going forth and bringing the gospel to those that are in, in need. And as we go forth, the, we realize, uh, as Jesus Christ here is, is, is telling us, that an enemy does come. And he is there to uh, kill, steal, and destroy, to pull out anything that we receive from the word. So if we are not careful, we lose what we receive from the word of the Lord. Amen. And so as we realize that this is Satan that has come and uh, put tares into the bedding of the, of the, of the feet, the, of the field of wheat. And the 26th verse says, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. As we look at it, we realize that uh, we don't always see uh, or uh, perceive where the uh, enemy or the devil is uh, putting in or bringing in something that will uh, destroy or pull down what the Lord has built up in us. Uh, what we have received on Sunday for lesson, we don't uh, see where the devil is bringing in family, friends, or uh, co-workers to knock the word of the Lord uh, out of us if we don't get it deep in our heart and live by it and stand on it. Amen. The 27th verse says, So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Without then that, then that we go and gather them up. 
But he said, Nay, lest while thou gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. And man, this here makes us realize that many times the uh, the uh, the church people, the uh, uh, people that is of the Lord can resemble those that are of the world. We must uh, make a difference in order for it to be a, a noted change. So as the, the, the Lord says, that Jesus Christ says here, that uh, if you pull out the tares now, that then you may pull up uh, those that's not rooted yet, that has not uh, got grounded yet. So we're going to leave it all together. And then at the end, we shall uh, destroy the tares and, 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 and bring in to the barn the, the wheat. It said, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Amen. This is a wonderful uh, statement here. Uh, as we've heard many times, you know, we uh, read Revelation, it says as, as the Lord uh when he come, that he will gather up his church. Uh, many of us has um, believed, has looked at it. To me, this is saying that it's possible that those that are not of God will be taken up first. Those that are not uh, in the will of the Lord will be taken up first. And then those that are with the Lord will be taken up after then and brought into the barn. The uh, 31st verse says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it, grown, when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. And as I looked into this uh, lesson and statement that Jesus had made, uh, I never realized, you know, as we look at the gardens that we see today, uh, you look at a mustard uh, green, a mustard, uh, that it never gets to any, you know, significant size. But when I looked it up um, on the internet, that there are trees um, that are of this plant that grows very large and that it is big enough that uh, the birds can uh, uh, nest in it. It said, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Amen. Some say that the birds is considered as something that is bad. It's not always uh, because the Lord also made the birds of the air and that they making a home there as we uh, are the branches of the Lord are to bring those in that are of the Lord. Amen. And so it's not necessary that the birds are there uh, that lodge in the branches of the of this uh, large tree is that of evil that can be of good. Another parable speak here unto them. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Amen. Uh, this hymn speaks of uh, as we, uh, those that know about baking, that as we uh, put baking powder in, which is considered, uh, what we, which we consider uh, the leaven of that day uh, is the, uh, what makes the bread rise. It, 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 it ex extends it, but as they knead the bread, uh, 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 work the bread, work all the ingredients into the bread, then the uh, the the uh, baking powder or the leaven that is kneaded into the bread, uh, 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 brought into the bread, uh, it makes it rise, it grows in it. And it can be, as we know that uh, the Lord Jesus uh when in, in, in the Old Testament, the leaven was to be left out and they were to have feast of uh, without leaven in it. But as we uh, can see that it can have good uh, aspects to it, but it also can have bad. It can uh, uh, bring forth things that is not good, not, is, not righteous and of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to read you uh, the information received from the Commentary, the uh, Matthew Henry commentary says, uh, speaking on these three parables, it says, 
The parable of the sower is plain. The seed sown is the word of God. The sower is our Lord Jesus Christ by himself or by his ministers. Preaching to a multitude is sowing the corn. Preaching to a multitude, preaching to, as the, as the word says, uh, where there's two or three gathered together in my name, I am in the midst. So it's not necessarily always a multitude. We can speak the word to a few and go forth with that. And so we know not where it will light. Some sort of ground, though we take ever so much pains with it, bring forth no fruit to purpose, while the good soil bring forth plentifully. I mean, as we know uh, for sure, there are many people that goes to church and go home and their life never change. They go and uh, 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 they claim to be Christian. They claim to be a child of the Lord, but their life, they never allow the Lord to make changes in their life to where they say, I've been like this all my life. I can't change. You can't change if you will not allow the Lord Jesus to make a change in your life. But as you follow the Holy Spirit and as you uh, meditate on the word day and night and as you put the word in your mind and your thoughts and in your action day and night, that he can make a change in you. He can uh, change you from what you were. It says, so it is here with the hearts of man. Those different characters are here described by four sorts of ground. Careless, trifling hearers are an easy prey to Satan, who as he is the great murderer of souls, so he is the great thief of sermons and will be sure to rob us of the word if we take not care to keep it. As we do not uh, meditate on the word um, ourselves, as we go home and, and reread what the minister has read to us, go over the lesson again, uh, ask the Lord for clarity for where we don't understand. As we uh, uh, we may not understand the word, but if we go uh, go to church or uh, whatever, if it's one day a week, if it's two days a week, uh, how often it is, and then we go back home and reread what the minister has read, then we can ingrain into our soul, into our mind, more of what the Lord is saying. We can also uh, begin to walk the walk of what was ministered to us, and as we began to walk the walk or do the things that is preached to us on Sunday or whatever day of the week that we are at service, then as we do this, then it can make a change in our life. It does uh, ingrain into ourselves. It's a hypocrite like the stony ground often get the start of true Christians in the, sh in the shows of profession. Many are glad to hear a good sermon who do not profit by it. They are told of free salvation, of the believer's privileges, and the happiness of heaven, and without any change of heart, without any abiding conviction of their own depravity, their need of a Savior, or the excellence of holiness, they soon profess an outward and unwarranted assurance. They do not go forth and walk in the walk that they have received. They do not go forth and, and, and read the word for themselves. They do not uh, meditate on what the word is to them and asking the Lord to open their eyes and ears for understanding and wisdom. As we do this, then we receive. But if we do not, we do not receive. It's just like going in the, in the church and hear a great sermon. And if many of us is not careful, we can walk out and someone asks you, well, what was said? And what was the sermon about? And you can't even repeat what the sermon was about. If you at least took notes, you can uh, go back home and go over it again. Uh, ingrain it in your mind, ingrain it in your soul. It said, but when some heavy trial threatens them, or some sinful advantage may be had, they give up or dis disguise their profession, or turn to some easier system. Worldly cares are fitly compared to thorns, for they they came in with sin and are a fruit of the of the curse. They are good in their place to stop a gap, but a man must be well armed that has much to do with them. They are entangling, vexing, scratching, and their end is to be burned. Hebrews 6 and 8. Worldly cares are great hindrances to our 
profiting by the word of God. The deceitfulness of riches does the mischief. They cannot be said to deceive us unless we put our trust in them. Then they choke the good seed. As we put our trust in how much I make and what I can do with what I make. And because I made it, uh, I went and worked in this me that has uh, 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 profited from this. Uh, not putting forth that the Lord blessed me to receive this job. The Lord blessed me that I uh, uh, received this income, that I received the knowledge to increase in my uh, finance. I increased the knowledge to uh, increase in, in what the Lord is doing for me. Uh, as we put ourselves ahead, then we begin to push the Lord uh, back further and further in our life. And so what dis distinguishes the good ground was fruitfulness. By this true Christian are distinguished from hypocrites. Christ does not say that this ground, this good ground has no had, has no stones in it or no thorns, but none that could hinder its fruitfulness. All, all are not alike. We should aim at the highest to bring forth most most fruit. This is what stands us out. Uh, there are many people that are good, but are we serving the Lord? Are we walking in his statutes? Are we claiming him as Lord of our life? Are we making him head of what we do and how we propose our life to be and how we raise our children and uh, run our businesses? It said the sense of hearing cannot be better employed than in hearing God's word. And let us look to ourselves that we may know what sort of hearers we are. Also in Matthew 13, 36 through 43, this parable represents the present and future state of the gospel church. Christ's care of it, the devil's enmity against it, the mixture there is in it of good and bad in this world and the separation between them and in the other world. Uh, even in the church house, there are bad. Uh, it, there's no place that there's always good. There's nothing but good. There are bad, there are thorns, there are uh, uh, hypocrites, there are deceivers, there are liars in any area. But we have to uh, be fruitful in the word of the Lord. And how are we fruitful? As we said, uh, we take the word that we receive, we go home and we study it. We make it a part of our life and it may, we make it change our life. And then we go forth in this. And so, pr so prone is fallen man to sin that if the enemy sow the tares, he may go his way. They will spring up and do hurt. Whereas when good seed is sown, it must be tended, watered, and fenced. The, the bad seed is going to come up no matter what. But the good seed, you got to do something with it. You got to uh, uh, tend it. Just, as I said, you got, got to uh, work the, the ground. You got to water the ground. You got to put fertilizer on it. This is by reading the, the word. This is by studying this word. This is by going forth and, 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 and speaking the word uh, to, to others. You don't have to know what the word, all the word means, but know a verse or two and say, as the Lord said, I pray for someone. And I said, the word said, I said, the Lord, as Jesus Christ did, when Satan came to him, he said, it is written. You ain't got to be a, a, theology, a theologian of, of gospel to say it is written. It is written in the word. Know a verse. You ain't got to know the Bible. Know a verse. And when something is said and it pertains to this, say it is written. You ain't got to be a, a, a theologian to, 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 to say this. Uh, and this is to ingrain the word and move the word further and further in our life and how we go forth. It said the servants complain to their master, Sir, didst thou not so good seed in thy field? No doubt he, he did. Whatever is amiss in the church, we are sure it is not from Christ. Uh, as we realize and know that uh, there, no matter what great, uh, uh, no matter how small or big the church is, there can be, there will be, not can be, there will be those that do wrong. There will be those that try to tear down and pull pull asunder. There will be those that lie and, 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 and just be deceitful, uh, no matter how large or how small the congregation may be. 
all of these are possible. There will be things that is done that is uh that, that is that the minister may not even be aware of but we must go forth and that's why we have to stand in and, and we stand in judgment for ourselves we can't go forth about because the church is not we are not going to stand in front of God as a church. We are the church that stands in front of God. How did you manage the church that God gave you, the body that he gave you? How did you manage it? Did you go forth and use it? Did you uh, uh, minister to those that was poor in spirit? Did you uh, pray for those that were sick? Did you uh, uh, cast out devils uh, by speaking the word? Did you uh, raise the dead by uh, not just spiritually but physically as well? But did you raise the dead of, of those that are, are dead in Christ, those that has not heard the word, uh, those that that and as we go forth that we realize and know that God can and will work through us amen because he lives in us the, as they said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the spirit that lives in us and as we stand on the word as we speak the word that Jesus Christ spoke then we can use his words and so the raw transgressors and such as openly op oppose the gospel ought to be separated from the society of the faithful yet no human skill can make an exact separation those who oppose must not be cut off but instructed and that with meekness and though good and bad are together in this world yet at the great day they shall be parted then the righteous and the wicked shall be plainly known here, sometimes it is hard to distinguish between them. Let this not be our life, that our life is such a mess uh, that we are doing, uh, we are saying we are Christian, but there is no change. We will cuss the, uh, uh, our, our children out. We will cuss uh, uh, those that get on our nerve out just as fast as the sinner will. We will uh, lie just as quick as the sinner will. Let this not be our life. Let this not be our shadow of who we are. It said, let us knowing the terrors of the Lord, not do iniquity. At death, believers shall shine forth to themselves at the great day, they shall shine forth before all the world. They shall shine by reflection with light borrowed from the fountain of life. The light that we have in us, that we walk in today is the light of, the, of Jesus Christ. As we walk and do his will, this light that we live in, uh, that we carry, if we uh, spread it abroad, is the light of Jesus Christ that lives in us. There's sanctification will be made perfect and their justification published may we be found of that happy number amen and said the scope of the parable of the seed sown is to show that the beginnings of the gospel would be small but its latter end would greatly increase in this way the work of grace in the heart the kingdom of god within us would be carried on in the soul where grace truly is it will grow really through perhaps at first not to be discerned it will at last come to great strength and usefulness the preaching of the gospel works like leaven in the hearts of those who receive it the leaven works certainly so does the word yet gradually it works silently and without being seen mark the fourth chapter the 26th through the 29th yet strongly without noise for so is the way of the spirit but without fail thus it was in the world the apostles by preaching the gospel hid a handful of leaven in the great masses of mankind it was made powerful by the spirit of the lord of hosts who works and none can hinder thus it is in the heart when the gospel comes into the soul it works a third change it spreads itself into all the powers and facilities of the soul and alters the the property even of the members of the body in romans 6 and 13. from these parables we are taught to expect a gradual progress progress therefore let us inquire are we growing in grace and in holy principles and habits? Are we going forth? Are we moving forward? Are we becoming the person that God 
knows we can be if we take his word and move forward with it. Amen. I pray that you meditate on this great and wonderful lesson we have this week. And y'all have a blessed and wonderful day.